very important topic right why a student would fail usmle this is very very sensitive topic and it's very hard to discuss you know i i thought this 100 times before recording this that should i record this video or not but you know i've i've received so many messages saying that hey i failed my step 1 i failed my step 2 what should i do so i collected those you know series of experiences and have you know compiled things which you should be taking care of or things you should not do while you are preparing for your step 1 okay this is very very important for you so let's start um, number 1 is taking exam unprepared this is a common thing right now now step 1 is pass and fail hey just give me that pdf i just want to go through this pdf these are few videos i want to focus on high yield high yield high yield and people are just focusing on high yield pdf and they read those and uh, they would take their nbme practice and exams and nbme scores would be high because those pdfs are actually made from those nbme questions they falsely elevate your nbme scores and give you a false confidence and if you just do that and you take your exam and and you get the undesired result right that's that's not how it should be think this way why nbme board transitioned step 1 exam to pass and fail because they wanted to focus on holistic approach they didn't want residency applicants saying that hey i am 250 hey i am 260 and you know i got so much high in my step scores they wanted to remove that equation so and they also wanted to take that burden off that exam so that in med school you can focus more on your concepts and build upon your concepts and then you don't have to stress about the scores of your step 1 but there's a complete reverse paradigm shift now people are saying that hey step 1 is just pass and fail and i just want to read extremely high yield information give me something which is extremely high yield which will be tested in my exam and then i'm going to take my exam this is not how it is going to work okay you have to work on your concepts otherwise you will end up getting undesired results because if you don't focus on your step 1 now your basic foundation will be weak in your step 2 eventually you'll suffer in step 3 eventually in your practice okay you have to have your building blocks extremely strong the second thing i would point out about is using too many resource hey i studied kaplan i also watched uh, your summary strike videos i also saw bnb i also saw pathoma i studied and that sketchy micro and i've joined some of the personal tutor classes and th- if you use many resource you are just falling into the trap of passive learning that okay i'm going to study from this source this source passive learning you are keep you, you are watching this video 10 times you are watching this video 5 times you are reading this book you know 15 times you are just falling into the passive learning trap so using too many resource will broaden your or blur your fo- focus you want to focus on one thing one notes one videos and one q bank the ideal resource for you would be something like this you want to focus on first aid let's say usmle strike videos and u world as the q bank okay so use limited resource number 3 peer pressure and reddit anxiety i literally was anxious after reading reddit posts while i was preparing for my step 1 i had to literally delete reddit when when my exam was you know in in short period of time because you would have many posts which would just say hey i scored let's say 260 270 and when i took my step 1 it was the scored version and then sometimes you know the entire week would be like hey i failed my step 1 i failed my step 1 i failed my step 1 that will keep on building up your anxiety levels so if you are near your exam i would highly encourage you to delete reddit if you are following that regularly once in a while it's good to know what's what's the what are the best resources what people are using right so get you know list them out just focus on those resources you don't need to go back to reddit every day and get yourself anxious okay so reddit anxiety is a thing and i would highly encourage you to delete reddit if your exam is nearby fourth one is taking your exams when even nbme scores are not good so that's a premature um exam date selection right you say hey i have to take this exam because i'm getting married 
I have to take this exam because of family situation despite my NBME scores are like 40%. You cannot do this. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, right? So here is the thing which I found from Reddit is if you and certain schools dean practice this if you take two nbmes and if two nbmes are consecutively 67 percent or more if three nbmes are more than 65 percent then you are safe to take the exam my personal rule of thumb is if you really want to be safe you should be scoring at least 70 percent on two consecutive nbmes and you should have a good probability of passing NBME or, or your real exam in, in a one week. That's my golden rule of thumb. So I would stick with the percentage 70%. If your percentage is a 70% in two consecutive NBME exam, that means you are good to take your step one. Number five is passive learning. I've, I've come across students who have said, I've read first aid 10 times. Uh, how many times should I read that? I have watched your videos five times. Should I should I watch your videos one more time to revise? That's all passive learning. Unless you know what what's active learning. Active learn active learning is while you're reading that explanation, you have to actively make a clinical simulation scenario, or you have to actively make a question in your mind, which would be the answer for which would be correct for that incorrect option. Okay, that's what active learning is. You are asking yourself. And after maybe half an hour, you're asking yourself again on what you what you studied. That's active learning. Very, very important. If you are just passively consuming media like Netflix, you will just remember the summary of the movie, right? Can you remember all the dialogues of the movie? Unless you are like super intelligent, you won't be able to remember, right? So those are like five things. And, and lastly, I would like to give my personal advice if you are preparing for USMLE, regardless of your step. Is number one, I, I frequently get asked, can I pass my step one in three months? Can I do my step two in four months? I would always say this over and over again, chase concepts, don't chase time. Because ultimately, time would chase you. If you, if you just forego that concept that, hey, I just want to memorize this table and I don't want to know why CVP is high, why pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is low here. Just forget it. Just memorize the table. That's that's the worst thing you can do ever. Okay. So chase concept, not time. Short and quick goals would really wear you out. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. Okay. Number two, all that matters is discipline and consistency. After watching this video, you'll be pumped, you'll get motivated, you'll get that dopamine surge, you'll study. But tomorrow, again, you'll look for another source of motivation. Motivation is temporary. Inspiration and discipline is something permanent. Okay, you have to be disciplined, you have to have that consistency, you have to have that mindset that I want to learn new thing so that I can save that patient. This is the exact same mindset I used for my entire preparation and this works, okay? And number three is ignoring your mental as well as physical health. I would say I was in that trap in my med school, okay? Uh, every time you you take your high school exams, right? Um, this is high school. Hey, I should focus on my high school, not my health right now. Keep on studying, studying, studying. You go into your MBBS med school. Uh, this is very, very important. Keep on studying, studying, studying. And then, you know, while I was preparing for USMLE, I realized that if I continue to do this, this is a never ending race, right? Even for right now, let's say I'm in my residency. Oh, I have to focus on my residency. Health can, you know, come follow. No, you have to consciously take out time to focus on your mental as well as physical health. We all have to consciously take that decision even I'm in that learning phase, so you should always try to consciously decide and take in charge of your mental as well as physical health because ultimately that will decide how you perform on your exam. So those were my few thoughts on why someone can fail in USMLE exams. If you should, if you take care of these things, you'll be all set for your USMLE exams. If you have any questions, you can ask in the comments below. I would really like if you ask me on Instagram because that's uh, something which I check often. 
and I would highly encourage you to check um, USMLE Strike app. You'll see step one recorded videos. We also conduct live step two CK classes. And if you are um, appearing for match, we also provide CV editing service. We have interview preparation service and entire um, ERAS application match cycle service. So please check that in the usmlestrike.com website. Thank you.